Alrighty, it is uh, 5.30, so we will call this meeting to order. Um, before I get to the approval of the agenda, there are a couple of changes. Um, under new business 4.4, .4, um, we're going to uh, remove that item from the agenda tonight. And um, under uh, four point, uh, under new business, uh, we're going to add Four point six criminal records checks. It's a uh, letter from uh, Staff Sergeant Danny Willis that uh, was just handed out. Um, a change in the meeting date uh, will be October the fifth. And the final change, uh, there is going to be a new six, which will be uh, an in-camera item, uh, and uh, more information will be uh, handed out uh, during the. Since all the changes at the moment. Uh, yes, yeah. and uh, we'll have a, a motion to move in camera at the appropriate time. Great. Okay, if uh, there are no uh, additions or deletions, uh, can I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? All those in favor? Opposed to carry? We have one set of minutes uh, for July 7th. Um, any discussion? Amendments? Seeing none, can I have a motion to adopt amendments? Next is an update uh, from the municipal engineer on the emergency access points, uh, southbound dedicated traffic signal on Veterans Memorial Parkway. Uh, Ross, Michael's not here. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. We don't have uh, additional information on these two uh, two items uh, at this point in time, so that's uh, it's really all I think applies to those, those two points. Okay, well, I, I do know we did um, get some correspondence from highways. Uh, back uh, specifically on um, the cutouts that were requested by uh, the traffic members. Um, specifically, they basically are uh, recommending that uh, they don't proceed or they don't support them. Um, I will say that uh, I had a chance to talk to um, a traffic member on the weekend at the hockey rink uh, and let him know what uh, the results of Highway's um, uh, decision was. Uh, needless to say, he was disappointed. And uh, uh, my opinion is that Highway's in this letter is treating that section of the Veterans Memorial Parkway as a highway. And when in fact it isn't uh, a highway, so to speak, it's more of a, a local road for, for all intents and purposes. Uh, he, he is satisfied or would be satisfied if uh, we had multiple curves so that a cruiser could indeed uh, uh, cut across. And he doesn't, uh, doesn't necessarily agree with the highways, uh, or isn't necessarily worried with highways' um, opinion that uh, the general public would use it as, uh, as a way to, to turn around. Uh, so I would suggest we pursue this a little bit further. He's also extended um, an invitation to uh, the highways to uh, come and sit with him in a cruiser. And uh, so he can demonstrate the challenges that uh, members face when trying to uh, deal with a, a vehicle going the other way. So um, I'll leave it at that and open it up for a discussion on that. Uh, if there are matter. I think uh, if we want to call our regional highways here, uh, most of our regional highways have uh, several three or four dedicated emergency vehicle U-turn routes that are simply signed with no U-turns unless it's an emergency vehicle. So I think there's, there's certainly precedent for something similar to be done with our stretch of roadway, which for all intents and purposes I think meets the criteria for a highway, given the speeds and the traffic volume. Some of my thoughts. So just to let the committee know, I will work with the um, municipal engineer to press this further and uh, certainly extend the RCMP's invitation uh, to highways to uh, let them have a better, a better feel for the challenges that the members face, particularly on that uh, stretch of road. Was this a verbal negative or is there a written letter that's rejected or there is a 
did say you written a piece of correspondence in the agenda package that uh, there are eight Okay. There are no. Uh, there's no further discussion, uh, Chief. Uh, Chairman, just some clarity. Uh, you mentioned that you're going to work with the engineer to somehow uh, keep this alive and resurrect it. Right. Um, do you wish it to uh, appear in future agendas, or would that be at your call to uh, put it on the appropriate agenda? Just look at the directions mm -hmm. to follow up with this item. Um, it will be my call, so if there's something to update, then we will uh, add it to the agenda. Thank you for that direction. So we will move on to item 3.2, uh, verbal report from the engineer regarding uh, graffiti cleanup. Uh, Ross or Kevin, did we? Uh, uh, this, this, this is to, uh, to Kevin. Sorry, I'm being suppression, sorry. It's the uh, verbal report uh, on graffiti cleanup, progress report on short term initiatives by public works. Uh, I think it's been going actually quite well. Um, Officer Williams uh, has noted um, quite a number of, of tags on uh, public property and private property, and uh, we've noted those <coughs> tags to Public Works, and Public Works has gone out and removed a substantial amount of the, of the tagging. Uh, there's still a great deal of work to be done. Uh, we also had some success with some private property owners uh, that were, were tagged, and we notified them uh, of our city's bylaw, what we had, uh, what, what's in the bylaw requirement to remove it, and uh, gave them a, uh, a reasonable amount of time, and all three of these property owners complied and removed the graffiti in a timely manner, uh, and to the satisfaction of Officer Williams. Uh, so we are moving ahead, it's, it's working and it's in its infancy. Uh, there is some growing pains, uh, but we are working through those, uh, those concerns. Thank you. We will open it up to the public. Do you have any questions or comments? Committee? Sure. Just wanted to thank staff for their ongoing efforts uh, regarding this, and I'll continue to give my full support um, to this and the, the other issue that we have. Thank you. We will continue under new business uh, item 4.1, a report from Staff Sergeant Danny Willis on the uh, monthly mayor's report for July and August. Danny. Thank you. I'll start by uh, giving an update on our uh, inspector. Uh, Kevin Violet uh, has been chosen as the, the new inspector. He's currently stationed in Yellowknife. He has 31 years service and uh, will be, uh, had been in Saskatchewan prior to uh, being in Yellowknife. He was in charge of a Battleford City detachment, so he has run a similar size detachment, so that won't be new to him. What will be new to him is our prime computer system, because the rest of the RCMP is on a different system, and our VC uh, port system. So we'll have to educate him on those. He's supposed to be on a house hunting trip later this week or early next week. We hope to be down here uh, by November 1st or sooner, which will be a welcome relief. Our sergeant position is also vacant, has been since April, and the Max Fossum of Vancouver Drugs is uh, being transferred over to here. Max had a lot of um, detachment policing experience prior to going into the drug squad section he's now in, and he has his house for sale in Vancouver, and as soon as that sells or uh, he makes alternate arrangements, hopefully he'll be here by November 1st as well. There was a B and E breaking down into a business where the uh, phone lines were cut in the tire store of Royal some months ago. On the same day, there was one at Garden Works in Calgary, and then uh, in July, the same uh, type of scenario happened at the White Spot uh, in Calgary. There were also 16 similar breaking enters in uh, the Saanich area, and uh, fortunately, either through good luck or good policing, uh, Saanich were able to apprehend. These individuals in the process of one of the last brick and enders. I believe they're from the interior uh, of BC. So they're out roaming around different countrysides and getting into different communities. Uh, so that scourge from our population has been taken care of for a little while. 
In July, there was one the large borough operation in Colwood that was uh, covered by our street crew unit. More than 300 plants were seized. There are three items that there's letters to you that we can deal with uh, separately as they come up if you like. The other comment uh, regarding Crown Council, I just want to bring the Council's attention and it's a little um, different is that uh, just for Council to be aware that Crown Council continues to be uh, scrutinized budget-wise by the province and that impact is felt by us because they get more and more stringent on the charge approved policy. It used to be uh, they looked at whether there was a likelihood of conviction and uh, whether it's in the public interest to prosecute somebody. As most people expect that if we catch a bad guy committing a crime and we can prove it, then Crown should prosecute. Now they've added another word to their uh, prosecution uh, charge policy. Are we required to prosecute in the public interest? So they add that extra word that uh, gives them more leeway to say no. And I know when talking to prosecutors, they're not happy with it, but it's direction they're getting is all cost saving measures. And uh, because it's done policy wise, the public doesn't really get to see that. So I just wanted to bring that to council's attention for whatever they care to do with that information. Something the police can't comment on, or other than just to advise you as protective services, something that does impact us. That's all I have on the other three items. Well, thank you, Danny, for loving the meeting up. Uh, we'll bring it to, uh, to the public first. Seeing none, uh, committee. Come on, Dean. You can uh, you can comment. You're not a you're not an officer here. I have my own thoughts. Uh, by the way, it was a little bit of luck and some good food. Too. Just on Inspector Violet, um, he is uh, coming to the uh, detachment with his eyes wide open. Uh, he's had a very, uh, very lengthy conversation with Superintendent uh, Jim Faulkner on uh, the uh, what the culture is at the detachment. And of course, his, uh, Superintendent Faulkner was uh, the detachment commander prior to uh, Mark Fisher. So he's well aware of uh, the dynamics, and he will all, Inspector um, Violet will also be making uh, the rounds to the various municipalities. I uh, expect to be meeting with him um, soon prior to his, uh, his uh, taking on the role at West Shore, and as we did with Mark Fisher, and to outline our priorities and that sort of thing. So um, we're quite excited to have him on board, and he, kind of, he does come recommended uh, by various members. And so uh, we'll see where that takes us. So I, uh, Danny and I will have to chat a little bit more about the prosecutor, um, the language in, in the uh, policy and the change there, because uh, I think that's something that we need to follow up on, quite frankly. And uh, if it gives them more leeway to say no, then we ought to be fighting back, because that's part of the problem with some of these characters. They're not, uh, they're not getting prosecuted, and. Um, Certainly, the courts haven't been holding up their end of the bargain, which has made it frustrating for uh, for uh, police in, in the province to uh, to enforce uh, our, our laws. So, I think we should have a little bit more discussion on that, and perhaps uh, strategize as to how we can uh, can deal with that. But, uh, committee. Receipt of the uh, report, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. from Staff Sergeant Willis on Municipal Policing Considerations for 2012. Thank you. I've uh, submitted a letter to all three councils, uh, much the same uh, about what the policing uh, numbers are. Currently, uh, we're down 20% uh, in what our establishment is supposed to be due to either transfers, illnesses, maternity leaves, paternity leaves, a number of things. I know it's a, uh, coming to an election time and nobody wants to spend more money. Basically what we're looking for is two things. One is any uh, ability for council to supply more members. Currently, 
Yeah, but more importantly, is maybe a strategy for the next five years and some discussion on what type of numbers are important to, to council. You can do uh, policing by police to population ratio, which is what you're taxing the public on, is police to population or your population. Or you can do it based on crime rates, or you can be uh, officer uh, caseloads, or you can do um, file counts. There's a whole bunch of dynamics involved in this. And it's going to take more discussion in just a few minutes. But I just want to bring that idea to the council's attention. The issue with the crime rates is basically if you wait for the crime rate to go up before you increase your officers, you're trying to close the barn door after the horse is out. Uh, in our view, or my view, police to population ratios are more relevant because, again, it's related to your tax base, where your money's coming from. and. Um, you have an opportunity to be proactive and preventive in a lot of ways rather than just waiting for the crime to happen. Currently, we're very pleased with their community policing section and a lot of the proactive stuff they're doing. And we believe that there's a lot of stuff happening that's keeping crime down. The crime rate for Colwood is lower than the provincial average. We want to keep it that way. We believe our regional crime unit has reduced our property crime in the whole West Shore area about 40%. So we want to keep doing stuff like that. So rather than take a lot of time, I'll just be able to answer any questions council may have with all these numbers and what they may or may not mean. Thank you, Danny. Open it up to the public. Uh, committee. Hi. Um, you had mentioned your 20% uh, below ranks. Now that's not entirely uh, the money. That's just you can't fill those. What happens is if um, we have a position and we fill it, and uh, council or city gets billed per month based on us filling that position. If we don't fill it, you don't get billed, which is part of the good thing for your budgeting. Currently, we're down 20% with those that we haven't been able to fill. Some of them are vacancies, such as the inspector's not here yet, or and the sergeant's not here yet, so we're waiting for them to come. Some. If they're on maternity leave, we can backfill them because we know that there's a, a one-year period they're away. So staff will allow us to backfill, provided we have an exit strategy at the end of it, because we can't be surplus, have too many, because you guys won't pay for too many. The problem ones for vacancies are the shorter term or the unknown illnesses. We have a couple right now that are long-term illnesses, but they could come back tomorrow. So we can't backfill those necessarily because we don't know what the extent is. Until we get a better assessment of how long they're going to be out, we're kind of stuck between the rock and the hard places. That we don't have an exit strategy, so they won't fill that position. There is some leeway with staffing in that, depending on what we can convince them. And if we don't spend money partway through the year, we run into that. Like we already have a bunch of salary dollars built up that aren't spent. So if we are over in the last half of the year, over the year we'll still be under. So later in the year there's possibilities again provided there's an exit strategy. And one of the exit strategies that I'm using right now is whether or not Matrosen comes on board as a emerging municipality mm -hmm. and how many bodies they have to produce. But if I get a, a net increase due to that, I'll be able to say, well I need these bodies now because come April when they have to pay for it, I'm gonna have extra officers and I have an exit strategy for from that surplus. <coughs> so it's very complicated. At the moment, we're down 20% this month because of uh, most these sicknesses and the vacancies that are being filled, but it fluctuates uh, frequently, daily. Anyone else? similar to what we did with the uh, COVID fire department. So as development increases, the population increases, it triggers another body uh, to be able to respond. Um, and it's worked well, uh, and 
we should probably be looking at something similar for, for West Shore, so, so it's predictable as our population increases, we can expect another member. We want to make sure that um, our police population ratio is maintained or, or even um, lowered. The second thing is, uh, I know Mark Fisher and I have spoken about this in the past, is uh, really doing an evaluation of policing uh, in Colwood and try to gauge a sense in the community as to how they want to have their community policed. Right now there is a sense that uh, we operate on a no call, too small uh, type of basis and, and I know uh, members uh, or the public would like a, a member there now as soon as they phone but uh, obviously that's not always practical based on, on uh, our, our resources. So which which means I think we should probably evaluate and see what our priority calls for, for the community, what they expect the member to show up for right away, as opposed to what is acceptable for them to perhaps uh, have a delayed response, have a different way of, of, of policing. Uh, there's a model in the UK that uh, was uh, tried out, I can't remember the, the, uh, the name of the model offhand, but uh, um, obviously, unless we're prepared to add uh, additional resources to, uh, to West Shore, the no call to small uh, scenario um, isn't practical. And, uh, you know, so it's the classic, you get what you pay for, and West Shore provides a fantastic service for the resources that, uh, that we provide. So uh, I think that's something that we're going to have to address with, uh, with the new inspector. Um, also in terms of, uh, in, in the type of service, uh, we need to look at um, the various sections and for instance, uh, one of the priorities that Colwood had uh, was traffic. Uh, a number of years ago we had four members of the traffic section and now we're down to two. And clearly, um, uh, Colwood had dedicated or its intention was to dedicate significant resources towards traffic and, and eventually those resources have been sent elsewhere. So I think we need to have that discussion when uh, the new inspector arrives in terms of where our, our resources are being allocated and, uh, and uh, go from there. But that's going to necessitate a, a broader discussion uh, at council and committee and in the community as a whole. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, do you need a motion for anything in there, Mr. Chair? Um, well, the, there is a recommendation uh, from uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Willis that uh, Call would look at approving an additional member for 2012. So certainly, I don't think there's any harm in sending the issue to um, to uh, the budget deliberations, where it will be included in the mix uh, for consideration, and uh, will you know, what the outcome of that will look like. Uh, so it's up to the, the next council, but uh, there's no no harm in sending it to the committee, the whole, or finance committee, Ross, uh, whatever route would be the most appropriate. So that's the motion that I would uh, look for, that get referred to, uh, to the committee discussion, or budget discussion. Be yeah, happy to make such a motion to refer to the staff service uh, request to uh, the budget committee. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed to carry. Next item is a report from uh, the Bylaw Enforcement Officer, Kevin Atkinson, regarding Bylaw Enforcement Monthly Activity Reports, July and August 2011. Kevin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in July, we had a total of 110 incidents that required our action to be taken. Uh, there was 46 complaints uh, for, and calls for service, 22 follow-ups, 38 patrols of our city parks, and four warnings uh, for 110 incidences. Uh, we had 10 alcohol par uh, pours within the uh, city parks within Colwood. We also had a controlled substance property, uh, which we had to attend. Uh, this file was concluded as the homeowner has chosen to demolish the home rather than, <coughs> than rebuild. So that file is now concluded. Uh, so that is July. Um, August, uh, we responded to 104 uh, incidents that required our action. Uh, there were 28 complaints, 31 follow-ups, 43 patrols of city parks, and two MTIs issued. Uh, we did 13 alcohol pours uh, this month within city parks. 
uh, we had to deal with uh, two uh, squatters camps on private property. And both of the property owners uh, were in the Caldwell Corners area. Um, we helped the owners to uh, remove the squatters from the area and, had, and are assisting them in cleaning up and reducing the hiding areas uh, for these people to hide. And so we're working with them to reduce the, any more vandalism or any more issues in that area. Uh, both of these reports are received for information only. Thank you, Kevin. In the public. Committee. The squatters that were uh, escorted up to the property, um, do you know where they moved on to? Uh, one of them has, is still in the, in the vicinity. Uh, the second squatter, uh, we have not seen him since, so I have no idea where he has moved on to. Uh, the first squatter still is in the area, and we are um, not seeing him on a daily basis, but we are encountering where he has been every couple of days. Uh, the RCMP are also having uh, continual contact with him as well, and so we're following up between the two of us. We're playing tag team uh, with him um, and making sure that he's not causing any major issues to, uh, to the general public. Can I have a motion to receive his report? All those in favor? Vote. Carry. Next item is a report from uh, Kevin regarding uh, graffiti outreach pilot program, business plan. Kevin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm not going to read the report <coughs> word for word here. I'll just sort of summarize uh, within the report, and if there's any questions, uh, I'll answer those questions at the end. Um, the City of Colwood in its 2011 annual report identified that uh, and a plan of attack to report graffiti as a priority, and this. Uh, this priority was also pointed out in the RCMP's annual, report, annual performance plan uh, and identified graffiti in Colwood and Langford as a significant concern. As a result, we did a, um, a little uh, presentation here to this committee uh, to show some of those effects of what graffiti is, is, uh, is doing. Uh, within the uh, 2010 in the school year, um, the local schools in our area, including David Cameron, had a significant uh, spike in graffiti uh, being done to those schools. Uh, from January 1st to June 30th of this year, David Cameron Elementary alone uh, required uh, facility maintenance to attend uh, graffiti damage to no less than 17 occurrences at the school. As of July 31st of this year, the City of Colwood, including the Fire Department and Public Works, uh, graffiti cleanup has exceeded $10,000. Um, these figures don't include any of the costs associated with graffiti vandalism applied to private or commercial properties uh, within the municipality. As stated earlier, we did a, a, a presentation to call it to, to this committee uh, to bring some insight to them and what the scope of the issue is. As a result, Protective Services Committee um, recommended a, a, that we go that staff go away and do a business plan and come back uh, in September with that plan, which is what we are doing now. In the interim, we have uh, implemented a tracking uh, program. Um, so we are tracking this graffiti and uh, monitoring it, tagging it, cataloging it, and then making a request to Public Works for, for cleanup of our worst hit areas. Um, the audit of the damage uh, documented uh, 60 incidents of new vandalism. Um, the graffiti was applied to city infrastructure that was reported to Public Works for removal. Uh, several investigative files were opened and the cleanup of three hard hit privately owned properties has been addressed. Uh, this has all been done uh, through the bringing on of an auxiliary uh, file officer for a short period of time to help us build our database and, and get everything set up. And that was done through Officer Williams and his expertise. So we had some very positive outcomes in a very short period of time. Um, so the options are that uh, for this community to consider are that the Protective Services recommend the Council that they take no action at all at this time. Uh, 3.2, that the Protective Services recommend the Council to approve the temporary part-time bylaw officer position one three days a week to operate the graffiti outreach pilot program for four months for 18 weeks uh, in length. This is the minimum time needed to see if the program is working, to track any taggers, and to gather all the necessary evidence to move forward with ticketing and subsequent civil actions. 3.3, 3, 
that the uh, Protective Services Committee recommend the uh, part-time bylaw officer position uh, for three days a week for 22 weeks in length. This is a better amount of time to see if our program is working and allows us more time to gather more evidence to get a better handle on what some of these taggers are doing and also to move forward with the necessary evidence of taking in subsequent civil action. 3.4. Uh, that the committee recommend to council that a part-time bylaw officer position for three days a week uh, <coughs> to operate the graffiti outreach program for a period of six months, 26 weeks in length. This gives us best, basically our best bang for our buck. We're, we're out there a little longer. We're having one more opportunity to, to make the necessary connections to track down some of these, these, uh, these taggers and also to see some of the fruits of our investigations and getting them to court and getting them prosecuted and uh, moving on with the necessary civil action to recover some of the costs that are incurred um, by the city and our residents. So the financial implications are as, uh, as put forward, uh, 4.1, if a uh, community takes no action, there is no financial um, um, implications to the city there would uh, be no opportunity to issue, but there would be no opportunity to issue a fine or proceed to court with any civil action to recover any of the costs done by the taggers. So there is a negative side to this if we do nothing. 4.2, the estimated expenditure for the graffiti outreach program, that is four months in length, 18 weeks, is $15,225. 3.4, uh, the graffiti program that is five months in length, 22 weeks, $18,570 and 4.4 um, graffiti program uh, which is six months in length, 26 weeks and length is $21,880. Before I go to the recommendation I'd just like to state uh, we had some very good successes. Uh, Officer William was doing our database and going out and cataloging our, our taggers for a period of five days and within that five days he was able to track one tagger down to within a four block radius of where this tagger lives. The second uh, one is Vic PD was able to, they caught a tagger in the process, got a confession out of him, got convictions out of him, and that same tagger has been seen in the West Shore. So now we have another positive link to another tagger out here in the West Shore, and we can follow up with that tagger. So in a period of five days, we had two positive hits, just in getting the programs set up and running, not even really going out there and really pursuing these, these taggers. So, that just tells you how much uh, this program will benefit the city in a short period of time getting two positive hits. I think that's pretty good uh, evidence showing that this program will work. For this committee to, for a recommendation for this committee, committee recommend to council that council approve a temporary part-time bylaw enforcement officer position one for three days a week to operate a graffiti outreach reach pilot program that is six months in length, 28 weeks, and that is for this committee to discuss. And if there's any questions, I'll answer those questions. Thanks, Kevin. Open it up to the public. I have a question. Uh, so we need your name and sure. uh, address for the uh, minutes. Do you want to go to the speaker? Or this uh, one? Here's mine. There's mine yeah. uh, my name is Jason Ross. Uh, sorry, what else did you need? Just the name or? Uh, and address. Address. Uh, I'm actually uh, 505 Quadra in Victoria. Um, can you summarize the basic, like the details of what the graffiti pilot program like what, what it entails? Through the chair, basically what it will be is going out and photographing uh, the tags, cataloging, uh, cataloging them into a book with a, with a tag or location of where they are. And by doing this, you can actually follow the route of where the taggers are, are going or where they have been and subsequently what the damage is. Uh, this can lead you to or from where they're going to school, where they're hanging out, so you can actually get a route of where they're traveling it gives you an opportunity to then apprehend them when they're in their in their element doing their tagging so you can do a little bit of a project stay out late one night and see if they're going to be tagging in this particular area and once that information is collected and we're we were able to apprehend a tagger uh, fines will be issued and subsequently any damages for property private or municipal property uh, they can be carried out through civil court and if there's any more uh, information, I'll let offer Sir Williams. Sure. Give some more information, if I may, please. Good evening. So just to build on that a little bit, uh, of course, recording and monitoring is, is, is very important, not only to, uh, to generate statistics and see how well we're doing, but also, as um, 
Officer Atkins said with regard to uh, some of our investigative techniques, it's, it's a must. Uh, of course, uh, abatement, we're already doing that, but we can always improve on that through communication, uh, create reciprocal agreements with other stakeholders like BC Hydro and TELUS to make sure that their infrastructure that's within the city is cleaned off as soon as possible. Uh, of course, the enforcement end of it, that's going to come uh, uh, come along as well. That's not only um, go, you know, going out and catching and prosecuting, but also looking at things like improving our bylaws and, and see if they can serve us better on, on how they're written and this sort of thing. And working in cooperation with the police. Um, actually, today I was just at the, um, the regional uh, task force meeting with uh, police agencies and other bylaws and whatnot from, the, from around the region, and we exchanged information. So it's, it's all about networking. And of course, education. Uh, when I say education, I'm not just talking about um, the obvious target groups like the, the youth and the schools and these, and these kinds of at-risk groups that, that will be doing the, uh, the, the offences, but also um, educating uh, our, our colleagues and our stakeholders such as um, uh, right here even in the, um, uh, in the city of Colwyn, you know, uh, you might have a building inspector that goes out to a building. He may see all kinds of signs that, uh, that indicate that maybe a tag lives there, but he doesn't know what to look for. So it's an all-encompassing kind of thing, and uh, it'll probably take an entirely uh, uh, another um, presentation to tell you exactly what it would all encompass, but um, those are the four cornerstones, essentially abatement, recording and monitoring, enforcement, and education. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Phil. Uh, any other questions with regard to that? Great. Um, Mr. Chair, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have some thoughts on this. I think most of, most of it's been expressed already, but uh, there's also, uh, just, just to append to what you have here, there's all sorts of uh, inexpensive technical solutions to uh, monitoring problems. CFC activated uh, alarms and sprinkler systems, and uh, as well as uh, you know noisemakers, stuff like that. Uh, so that's just an append, an appendix to uh, your presentation. And, and, and absolutely, I would agree with you, sir. That those are tools to be used, and um, and part of this process when we talk about education is as a service to the public when they when they get hit with graffiti. Um, one of the onus is on the, on the city to have them uh, clean it up as, as soon as possible. Um, one of the reasons is, of course, I mean, yes, it's a it's a bylaw violation, but we don't want to give the the violators the notoriety that they're looking for. Um, but also, uh, we could offer a septic advice, crime prevention through environmental design, where we could give the uh, the homeowners or the um, the commercial property owners. Um, ideas with regard to toughen up security, surveillance, and those types of tools that you um, that you suggest. So um, sometimes it, uh, it just takes someone to go out there and show them what can be done, and make and, and you know involve them in the process and empower empower them as well. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Phil, and thank you to all the staff who worked on this initiative. Given the widespread problem of graffiti uh, in our community and throughout communities, the request seems very reasonable. And given the success within such a short time, it's, I think, the responsible thing to do to continue to support the strongest approach. Um, and so I happy to move this recommendation today and to simply say that uh, I don't see it ending after six months if you continue to have these kind of results. Mm -hmm. This is something that, as you told our committee previously, is something that re requires an ongoing commitment because when the effort is abandoned, things can, can slip. Um, it does. And we, uh, uh, Kevin and I have had some uh, preliminary kind of conversations just thrown out there with some of the neighboring municipalities who, who like the idea that if this program was successful, that they may even buy into it and make it 
and contribute to make it a full-time program. I mean, that's a big maybe. But the interest is there, which is promising. But of course, we have to take the first step before we can even get to that juncture. Well, I can think of many things that the city's committed to long-term in terms of resources. Um, this is one that certainly is a, is a prime service to what people pay taxes for. Uh, would fit in the high echelon of priorities for me as a counselor, in perhaps comparison to other identified priorities, which I would say are lesser. So it's one we can debate, but certainly we have to get it off the ground. And my feeling today is that this is very positive. So happy to move. Thank you, Ernie. I wonder if you uh, might consider a little bit of uh, uh, an addition to the wording and uh, in that uh, we provide uh, have regular progress reports uh, on the progress of um, the uh, temporary project, and also uh, perhaps one month prior to uh, to the end of the six month project that we have an evaluation, so we can uh, gauge the successes and uh, or not of, of the program. So I think that's very important uh, if we're going to extend uh, any type of, of uh, funding. Kevin? Through the chair, uh, you would be receiving those uh, graffiti updates in the monthly reports, so that will be, be coming forward every month. And yes, uh, in, uh, for month five, we will prepare a report for the, the sixth month, uh, letting you know what our successes are and what we've accomplished or, or what, we're, what we're working on prior to that, so that will be in the works as well. Thank you. So uh, we do have a motion on the floor. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Next item uh, under new business is the uh, criminal records check. Uh, and Thank you, Mr. Chair. Start off with a moment for a decision from uh, the uh, waiver of this tonight. I'll explain that as we go along here. When residents uh, need a criminal record check with their volunteer, or whether they're looking for a job, uh, they come to the office, and if they're a volunteer, we don't charge them. If they're looking for employment, there's a $50 charge. If they're working with the vulnerable sector, which is the elderly or the, the young folks, and there's any type of a similar name person in the data bank, then it flags them as a possible uh, person of interest, and we can't give them a criminal record check saying that they're not a bad person. To do that, we have to figure for them and send the fingerprints off to Ottawa. Currently, that takes three to six months. In three to six months, either the volunteer opportunity is gone or the employment opportunity is gone, and these people are very dissatisfied citizens. So I called the informatics section, the uh, happens to be a guy I used to work with in Richmond, and asked him what was out there, and he gave me the rundown as we have it here. It should be two to five years before they come up with uh, a system within the RCB and Prime and whether it's iBook or something else that turns to be successful, that has a compatible digital readout system. However, there is a product now that's called LiveScan that uh, we can get for approximately $17,000, and that would be shared by the three municipalities. And with LiveScan, we can digitally do the fingerprinting for these people that need it, and within 10 minutes to an hour, we can have the answer. This is all computerized digitally which is much better service. The downside is we don't know if LiveScan will be compatible to whatever we end up using two to five years down the road. So do we want to spend $17,000 on something that may not be integrated? But the other thing we don't know the answer to is two to five years down the road, LiveScan may be still something we can use for this use and use the other system for the criminals. I brought it to View Royal uh, yesterday and one of their questions is, well, is this something we can do regionally as opposed to just within West Shore? It's very really logistically problematic to do that. However, uh, we are investigating that possibility, and I'll report back uh, what the answer to that is. My prime coordinator has a meeting tomorrow with other prime coordinators in the region, and they're going to discuss that. There's also, uh, once we brought that discussion forward to uh, Senator Victoria, criminal record people, 
they expressed some interest in uh, examining that further as to whether one agency wants to create an entity of its own that does all of them for the greater area. Bureaucratically, I can't see that happening, but it's something else that's being investigated. So again, before we spend this type of money, uh, we need to investigate those different things. So when I get a better answer on those things, I would bring it back to the community uh, for maybe a decision after we have some more information. So that's acceptable. Thank you, Danny. Uh, committee? Receive the letter for uh, information. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a little bit of information. Um, Danny, uh, are you, uh, do you have a liaison with the, uh, the MPs down at the Dockyard at all? I know they have a full section down there. Um, they are a federal agency, being the government, and RCMP is also a federal agency. Uh, and they can do fin fingerprinting right on the spot there. I'm not sure if that's appropriate crossover, but given you two federal agencies, is there a possibility? Always a possibility, but uh, they don't want to be dealing with the general public. They deal with their own people, and we can always ask those questions, but I highly doubt that they're going to be interested in dealing with the general public. This, uh, as you can see, the numbers, we do roughly 300 a month, and 40 to 50 of those need to be fingerprinted. That's a lot of traffic at our front counter, and uh, it's very taxing on our people. If it does go regionally, it's not going to be a West Road, because I don't want it. everybody from all over Victoria coming to our office, Victoria Sands can have it. I have a motion to receive uh, Danny's letter. <laughs> all those in favor, opposed, carried. Uh, next meeting is, as I said, the October the 5th. Um, now, uh, can I have a motion to move in camera? Favor. At this time, I uh, 